The tenth video is equally brief as the previous one, and we will look at how we can use MATLAB in an easy way to get desired pole positions. So it follows a similar pattern to the previous one. We're looking at the impact of changes in feedback gain on pole positions, and we're, the viewer is reminded we're not going to look at CISO tool yet. That will come later because CISO tool is a bit more advanced. So, if we want to do some simple coding, which compensator gain K will give us the pole that we want? And the tool that we'll use if we want to keep things simple is PZMAP. Here's the code then. You'll notice it's very similar to the previous video. We, design, we define our transfer function, whatever you want. Here I've kept it simple, 1 over S plus 0.2. We enter our compensator K. We form the closed loop transfer function using feedback. And then we just use PZMAP to view the poles. Now, the view is reminded that you can compact a lot of this into a single line if you want to. And you'll see the single line is there, which in essence assumes that if G already exists, um, you can write the statement P equals PZMAP brackets of feedback G times K comma 1. And you can manually change the K in here on the command line if that makes life easy for you. Now, a reminder, there are other ways of doing closed loop poles and changing K. And here, we're just doing an illustration to try and encourage students to say, hey, using MATLAB is really easy and really quick um, if I just want to have a quick idea about what's going on. Let's move to MATLAB then and see what's going on. So I've got an example here. Let's enter the transfer function, the example we've just done. So there's the first three lines. We've entered G, we've entered K, and we've calculated the closed loop feedback uh, transfer function. Now let's find the poles using PZMAP. So there's the pole. It's at minus 1.2. And the question is, all right, if I want to um, go and try some different values of k, do I have to do all those three lines again? And what we showed you was, no, you don't. You can compact all the lines into one. There it is. And now, manually, I can go and change that k. So we could try, for example, k is 0.2, and the pole position is minus 0.4. Or I could try 0.6, and the pole position is minus 0.8, or 1.6, and so on. Works very well. Alternatively, I could have tried a different transfer function. Let's try the transfer function G2. Oh, I haven't defined G2 yet, sorry. There's G2 there. You can see it's a quadratic. So now, you see, I can just stick G2 in there, and I can get the closed loop poles with um, an arbitrary value of K, which I've just put straight in the command line. So the key thing is, very, very quick and easy, just keep calling up the command line, change the K, and you can see what's happening. And sometimes the ability to do things like this is very insightful, very useful, and you can get the answer you want in a few seconds. OK, so let's ask a different question. What happens if you've got lots and lots of different values of k to try? Then clearly, doing it this boring way is going to take a long time, you know, put the command line, change the k, put the command line, change the k. And there exists some code in MATLAB which will do lots of k for you simultaneously. So you might decide that's the best way to go. So this command is R locus. And here you'll see we've given the uh, statement required to make R locus work. You can get all the poles in a single vector. I've here I've called it P numerous to say that it's got the poles for lots of different values of gain. And then I use R locus, that's the uh, function file, G, that's my open loop transfer function. And then you'll see I've put in lots of different values of possible K. Now I hope this will let me do what I want to do. No, it's not. It's playing up, so I'll have to do it on the MATLAB window. If you look at those different values of k, 0.1, 0.2, 0.5, 1 and 2, in essence, what MATLAB's going to do is going to treat those as the comp compensator, g as the open loop transfer function. It will form the closed loop transfer function, gk over 1 plus gk, and find the corresponding poles. So I've rewritten the statement here, exactly the one 
that was in that MATLAB window. And if you look, what's it done? So you'll see it's come out with P numerous equals minus 0.3, and that will correspond. Perhaps I'll draw a line here so we can see. So that minus 0.3 is the closed loop pole position that corresponds to that choice of k. So in essence, we've got g times 0.1 over 1 plus g times 0.1. And then you'll see there's another pole position here, the second in the output, and that corresponds to this value of k. And there were various values of k in that list, and you'll see, therefore, we've got various values of closed loop poles. And the advantage of this is I can now view the impact of changing k very, very clearly and see that you'll notice I've gradually increased k. And what's happened to the closed loop pole? It's gone from minus 0.3 to minus 0.4 to minus 0.7 and so on. So that's a very useful tool. Now, here's the downside. What happens if I put in a different transfer function? So let's try g2, which was a quadratic. What do you notice now? Well, because it's a quadratic, there's two poles for each position. And it's beginning to get a bit messier to see the pattern. I've got two poles that correspond to the first k, another two poles for the next k, another two poles. And you're looking at that and you're saying, well, apart from the screen being swamped, it does look a lot messier to see what's going on. And if I was to do g3, which is uh, has got three poles, and stick that one in, you'll see the situation gets worse. I've now got three poles corresponding to every k, and it's now a bit harder to see what's going on on the window. So what are we going to do next? The suggestion is that once you start getting lots of data, it's quite hard for the human brain to pick up lots of numbers on a screen and interpret it. So what do we normally do? We use pictures or a figure. And our locus will allow you to produce a figure instead of getting numerical output. And that's very helpful when there's lots of poles. However, there is a warning. It's not easy from this plot to determine which value of gain goes with which pole position. It will just give you a line. So you're a bit caught in the middle. You can either have the numbers or you can have the figure, but you can't have both unless you run the command twice. And we'll illustrate this now. You'll see I've put the commands down at the bottom here. So R locus G, if I just do that, it will put in lots of different values of K. It won't tell me what they are, it will just put them in. And if I look at the corresponding figure, there it is. What it tells me is that for small values of K, my closed loop pole is here. You can see because it's got that cross, so that corresponds to small values of K. And it tells me for large values of K, my poles are moving in this direction. I could, if I wanted, tell it exactly what values of k I want it to use. So that's what I've done there. And if I do that, you'll see it finishes at a particular point here, and that one will correspond to the highest value of k, which in this particular statement was 2. So that's one possibility. Now let's um, just get rid of those markings, because that's the system with a single pole. What happens if we try a system with two poles? Oops, let's go up and let's do G2 and look at what happens there. And you'll notice the picture's now quite useful because it's marked the two crosses. This is what, what we get when k equals zero. And it's told you that as you increase k, this pole goes that way, that pole goes that way, then one pole goes this way, and one pole goes this way. So you've got a very insightful figure for telling you how the pole positions move as you change the k. And you can use that picture to say, OK, where might the best pole positions be? And finally, we'll just do the third one so you can see the idea. Our locus G3. And here in this case, you'll see there's three poles. And you notice one of them starts here and goes that way. One starts there and goes that way. One starts there and goes that way. So again, you have a decision. What value of k is likely to give you the best overall positions of poles? And this is not going to be an exact science. And of course, the problem is, having the figure, you don't know which values of k go with which positions. You just can see the overall picture.
So in summary, it's relatively easy to use trial and error with MATLAB to determine a desired value of compensated gain which delivers the required closed loop poles, obviously assuming that your required closed loop poles are actually achievable. We can use our locus to gain insight into how pole positions change as the gain changes. And the figures are quite useful for this. So you could use the figures to get an overview. And then you could actually collect the numbers um, to say, all right, now I need exact numbers. I'll put the numbers on the screen, but focus my search. More generally, in the longer term, students will get introduced to root locus methods. And then you'll be able to do a lot more with these MATLAB tools.